here on the show, we like to talk about wonderful, great stars that have graced the silver screen, you know, the Hollywood legends, the great British actors. I don't know if you know this, but sadly, uh, a couple of days ago, it was the, well, I, don't, I hate the word anniversary, but the date of the demise of the brilliant actor, Sir Laurence Olivier, yes. And he, do you know where he's buried? That's right, he's interned in Westminster Abbey. A wonderful thing, isn't it, when you think of all the wonderful people that have been inside Westminster Abbey and to be able to be reminded of such a brilliant actor. Was there ever a better voice uh, for the documentary series, The World at War? And so many wonderful, wonderful film roles too. But of course, we turned our attention to a man who we sadly lost a few years ago now, who ended up becoming very much a personal friend. We're talking about a 007 man himself, Sir Roger Moore. Now his son, Geoffrey, has decided that it's time to let go of many of the uh, actors, shall we say, personal possessions. I'm not sure about this, whether I agree with it or not. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below because it's like everybody, isn't it, in a family? You have to decide, do you hold on or indeed, do you let go? Now, Geoffrey has decided that given it's the 50th anniversary of Sir Roger's very first appearance in Bond, do you know the first film? Live and Let Die, remember that? And of course, it was the brilliant theme tune by Sir Paul McCartney and his band then Wings. Well, he's going to be auctioning off many of Sir Roger's personal items, including wonderful costumes and clothes that he wore in the Bond movies, including the very famous white snow suit. Yes, alongside tuxedos that he wore at the Oscars and all sorts of things. Now, as you know, Sir Roger Moore had an incredible career, starting out originally as a model for Woman's Own. Of course, then he went on to marry the very famous British singer, Dorothy Squires, and then, of course, found happiness with various other very lucky ladies along the way. As I say, Sir Roger Moore really did leave an indelible mark in the movie world, and he was one of the nicest people that you could possibly get to meet. He was very charming, debonair, knew exactly where he came from, knew exactly how lucky he was. As he pointed out, you know, he started out hoping to become an actor. He wasn't, as he pointed out, the very best actor, but he did his very best on the screen. And I think when you watch any of the Bond films, you can see that Roger has a twinkle in his eye and definitely a debonair slant to his acting. He pointed out to me that when he was starring opposite the amazing sex symbol of the era, Lana Turner, that when he kissed her apparently on screen, she wasn't too happy because he was too forceful, get this ladies, and wrinkled her neck. And she showed him exactly how to screen kiss so that a woman wouldn't look aged on the screen. You see, you can learn something in everyday job, can't you? The auction for Sir Roger Moore's items go up on October the 14th. There will be a full catalog and look out for details coming up in the press. But if you could buy anything from the collection, what would it be? Would it be, for instance, Bond's bow tie? Would it be a poster? Or perhaps it could be something, in fact, from another spectacular success like The Persuaders or indeed The Saint. Do let me know in the comments below. Sir Roger Moore left his mark definitely on the world. And sadly, so many of us do miss him. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.